Welcome back, this is part three and also the final part of the tutorial where I'm showing you guys how to make this naval cannon in Blunder. So you haven't already seen part one and two, go ahead and check that out. That's what we do to modeling and materials. But this is the final part where we neaten things up a little bit and we'll also render it out and do a little bit of compositing so we kind of get this um, lens distortion happening which really adds an extra depth to our render, makes it look kind of really cool. Also adds a little bit of um, realism to it as well. So let's jump in and I hope you enjoyed this final part. Okay, now we're in part three. Like I said, we'll finish off by adding a few cannonballs, maybe tweaking the lighting a little bit better and then doing a final render with a tiny bit of compositing. So let's go Shift A, let's go to Mesh Options, add in a UV sphere. Let's move it forward and let's just give it a subdiv modifier right click and go shade smooth and the goal here is to kind of look at your cannon from the front and then kind of just scale this ball down the cannonball and just check roughly if it fits in the barrel here okay so in this case i can see that kind of fits more or less it doesn't have to be perfect but you guys get the idea so once I have that fitted, I'm just gonna go and bring it down, place it on the ground. And then in my top view, I'll kind of move it forward. So somewhere here, I'll just make a nice little pile. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go Shift D to duplicate, and I'm gonna go X and move it over till it's touching. I'll go Shift R just to repeat that action two times. And then I'll select these four cannonballs. I'm gonna go Shift D and then go Y move them till they're just on the side and then click and then go shift R two more times to repeat those actions. And then we just wanna select while we're holding in shift, let's just select these guys here. So it's free going like this and free going like this. And let's go shift D to duplicate and move them until they're perfectly in the middle here. So I'm just kind of eyeing it and you can see they all line up. And then all you have to do is just kind of move them up until they look like they're nested in here like that. Okay, they look like they're nested. And now let's just deselect. And now let's just select four of these in the corner. Again, in the top view, we're gonna go Shift D to duplicate. Move them until they look like they're more or less in the middle. There we go. And then let's drag them up. Till they look like they're kind of nested in there. And then grab one more ball and then from the top, just go Shift D to duplicate place it in the middle and then just drag it up till it looks like it's nested in here, like that. So what we can do now is I guess we can, hmm, we can turn off the stage. We can select all of these cannonballs and press M, go new collection, let's just call it balls and go create. And now we'll just drag this balls collection underneath the cannon. So we have a way of turning them on and off, but I'm gonna select all of them. I'm gonna hold in shift and select the top one then I go to my materials. I'm gonna to come to the drop down and give it that first um, coarse material, the um, rust coarse, the cannon one. In fact, let's double click on that material and just call it cannon. And with that still active, I'm gonna go Control L and I'm gonna to link the to materials so they all have them. So if I go into the camera view now, um, I'll bring back the stage. I still have those cannonballs active, but I'm just gonna take them and kind of rotate and place them kind of in front of the cannon like this. I think that looks nice. Maybe off to the side a bit. There we go. Now I'm gonna go Z and I'm gonna go rendered. That's cool. So um, I guess what I wanna do is I wanna just have some nice lighting here. What I might do is just go to my world settings. I'm gonna go to the color here and I'm just gonna make it a little bit lighter in value. I think that's a little bit better. There we go. And I'm gonna duplicate one of these lights. I'm just gonna rotate it and kind of have it coming off from the front here a little bit more, just so we can kind of see a highlight on those cannonballs. And what I'll do as well is, I might just duplicate one of these lights and kind of have it coming more closer towards the back here, just really want to get some nice rim lighting, just kind of catching the back of this cannon, like so. Maybe not quite as intense. You kind of get the idea, we're just really trying to get that cannon to stand out from that darker background 
and that's kind of really helped to highlight it. I think that looks good. So there we go. Maybe have one coming from here and I'll bring the strength of that one down to maybe like 120. Nice. Now we're really starting to get a nice look. So the thing here now is we can go ahead and go render and then render the image. And now that it's done rendering, I'm going to go into my compositing workspace and I click on use nodes, shift a search and then type in viewer and get a viewer node and then plug the color image into here, the image in right into there. There we go. And you can press V to kind of zoom out here in the compositor and Alt V to zoom in. But we want to now come over here and you can hold and shift and then right click and just drag and cut these two cables together. There we go. So now we want to go shift a search and we want to get a lens and get a lens distortion, place it on here. And what we're going to do is we're going to go and make it 0 0.05 and a distortion. And on the dispersion, we're going to make it 0 0.03 like so. And then we're going to click on fit. And now you can see we have this kind of camera distortion happening here. And if it's a little bit too much, you can always go maybe make it 0 0.02 at the top and maybe 0 0.04 at the bottom. And that's really looking good. So now you can see we have this kind of little towards the edge, just this kind of like little tiny bit of distortion happening as you can see here. And if I actually mute this thing, you can see the difference. So that really adds a nice kind of flair to this whole thing. And um, yeah, so that sort of compositing looks really good. So let's just go ahead, go back to our render and you should be able to see here that effect. So you can come here and change it from view layer. So you see it how it was. You can come back here and change it to combined or where is it? Yeah, change the view layer back to composite. And then you can see what the actual composite output looks like. So yeah, that is how to make a Canon in Blender 4.3. I really hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. I know it's not exactly very beginner friendly because I already expect you to kind of know things about Blender, but I think it's still uh, for people who are new to Blender and already know the basics. I think this is definitely achievable. I hope you've been able to follow along and make this Canon inside of Blender and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching.